Hi. Hi, I think we're live. Oh we're my God. Live. What a fun intro. Ooh, that was amazing. I was, was so, so excited cool. at the so walking cool. and that was amazing. I know. That was really great. Okay, you guys, welcome to Barnes and Noble's Midday Mystery Series. I'm USA Today bestselling author, Kara Ruta. I write books like Best Day Ever, The Next Wife, The Widow, and my next one comes out next week called Beneath the Surface. But who cares about all that today? <laughs> I'm here to introduce the one and only Frida McFadden. Hello, new friend. And welcome to the show. For those of you joining us today, I'm sure you already know, and there's a bunch of Frida Ritas over here. I can see already on the chat that Frida is a practicing physician specializing in brain injury who has penned multiple best-selling psychological thrillers and medical humor novels. Her work has been translated into 35 language, languages, has been optioned for film by Hidden Pictures, and has been read by millions of readers worldwide. Frida McFadden's novels have been nominated for a Good Reads Choice Award and the ITW Thriller Fest Award for Best Paperback Original Novel. Okay, so we got all of that out. Welcome, Frida. Hi, thank you for having me. Yay. It's so fun. And I mean, there's so many people and you guys, I just want to let you know, I will get to the questions from all of you as well during this. But first, we're going to start off talking about the coworker. Happy pub day. And my copy too. <laughs> Yay. It's out today. So tell us about the coworker. Where did the idea for the story come from? What was the spark? So um, it's, it's a workplace thriller. And I don't see a lot of those. And I actually used to work in an office like this a long time ago. I actually worked for Goldman Sachs. And I kind of was drawing on those experiences. And it's about a woman named Dawn, who's a little bit odd. And we've all either had a coworker like that, or we've been a coworker like that. Sometimes both, you know, <laughs> been on either side of that. So um, she goes missing one day and her coworker, Natalie, uh, gets a phone call saying, help me. And she like goes to her apartment and she sees something terrible there. And it is a whole adventure after that. And a lot of it is told through emails from Dawn to her friend and also emails that take place in the company. So um, we kind of are seeing a different picture from the emails than what we're kind of seeing in the actual book part, Natalie's part. So it's all about what happened to Dawn. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And okay, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about the characters. You have Natalie and then Dawn, and you mentioned both of them, but tell us a little bit more about each one. Right. So Natalie is, you know, the pretty popular person at work who, you know, everyone likes and she's organizing this 5K run and she's got a lot of energy. She's their most popular salesperson. And Dawn is, you know, a little bit socially awkward and she's really into uh, turtles. Um, she's like a little bit obsessed with them. And I, I've sort of been getting um, into Dawn's head. I, I think I relate more to Dawn than to Natalie in this book, to be perfectly honest. So I, I got a turtle of my own. His name oh. is Sheldon. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> kind of creepy, but also perfect. <laughs> oh, yes. He can be very creepy. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, and, you know, trying to get into her head and the way people treat her differently than they treat Natalie. Everybody treats Natalie like she's wonderful and everyone's a little bit less nice to Dawn. So yeah, those are the, the two main characters. And of course, there's the supporting cast as well. Right. And you picked a vitamin company to be the setting for the workplace. And it seems kind of like a mundane, you know, normal office. So how do you turn that into an addictive thriller? Tell us about VIX, the vitamin company, and why did you set it there? So I have to I have to give props now uh, to my husband because he came up with the idea for it to happen at the vitamin company. He has been banished from this floor of my house. Cause he's always, during my videos, he's always walking around in the background and making noise. And I'm like, just for this one hour, please, please don't come down to this floor. So anyway, but I'm gonna give him props um, in his absence. Um, when I was coming up with the idea for the book, I was like, I want them to work at some kind of company. I don't know what kind. And he's like, oh, it's gotta be one of those nutritional supplement companies. And I was like, yes. That's perfect because you can imagine like some of these companies can be a little bit seedy, but, um, you know, also a legitimate company. 
Although the hardest part was coming up with a name for the company. So the name of the company is Vixed. And I was trying to, it took me like month, like a year maybe <laughs> to come up with a good name because every single word I came up with was already a company. Like yeah. you name it, like it's a company, a vitamin right. company, not just right. a company, but like yeah. any I word, am. like, yeah. like, like flower love, that's a vitamin company or like <laughs> anything, right. anything you think yeah. of that yeah. could sound vitamin-y or nutritionally, it's already a vitamin company. Well, yeah, because you're on trend, right? So that's like that's a right. hot, hot <laughs> company to be. Okay, and I also, have, we have to talk about Sheldon a little bit more. Um, turtles become a main character in this story, and Don loves turtles. So, But how did you land on turtle, turtles as opposed to like a cat or a dog or anything else? Well, I think, you know, first of all, everyone in my household is obsessed with cats. That seems pretty normal to me right now. So I wanted to do something a little different, um, not something that most people are interested in. But I actually have met several people who are into turtles. So it's a thing, not uh -huh. a common thing, like cats uh -huh. or dogs, but it is a thing. It just sounds um, ugly, you know, like you can't really, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. There's just something cool about them. I'm not sure. It like I don't I don't quite get it, but I, I can sympathize. I can see it. So yeah. um I actually had a friend whose wife was very into turtles and um one of the many turtle lovers I've met in my life. Um and he was always buying her turtle presents and so I, I it, it's definitely a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And it is such a kind of um, unique, let's say, not yeah, um, it's unique it's a, exactly. It's a unique um, character trait to have uh, your main character have. I, I I loved it. I thought it was that one's creepy and also um, really smart. Yeah. So all right, you guys. So I think it's time to turn to some reader questions because we yeah. have a bunch. So I've actually yeah. grouped some together because some people were asking the same things. But well, okay, so. That's why. And hopefully I don't mispronounce anybody's name, but I might. Okay. So Jacob Torres and Joanne Sarek both want to know why you chose to write books in the thriller slash psychological fiction genre. Well, I love reading them. So I, I started out writing women's fiction and I actually been reading a lot of women's fiction then. And, but I've always loved thrillers. Like when I was a teenager, I used to read, um, Lois Duncan, and then I segued into Mary Higgin Higgins Clark. So those were some of my favorites. And I just always love them so much. And, you know, when you enjoy something and you get so much joy out of a book, like it makes you want to, or it makes me want to create something similar because I've always loved to write. I've been writing since I was like nine years old. So I was like, maybe I could create something like that that could give people that kind of joy. So that was sort of my motivation, just loving them so much. That's awesome. Yeah. And keeping people late up, up late at night, I would imagine too. Yeah. Okay. As they did you. Yes. Very good. Okay. So you tell intimate stories, like conflict, relationship, explosions happen between like a small group of people, two to three people. A lot of mysteries are, aren't so laser focused. And I, this is a question from your publisher, but I hadn't even thought about this way. You haven't locked like 10 people in a room and, you know, had them. So what, what kind of draws you to this more tight setting? I actually read somewhere that the ideal number of like main characters to have in a book is six. And it makes sense because like, think about like a phone number, like it has seven digits, you know, six to seven is like a number that we can remember. Like you can remember maybe seven digits, but if you, I mean, I know there's the area code too. So let's just forget that. <laughs> but like, you know, if, if you had to remember 10 digits, that would be really hard. So I think you could apply that to a book. Like if I were reading a book and it had like 10 characters that I immediately had to remember and they were all important, that's really hard to remember. And I'm right. usually reading while like 20 other things are going on in the house. Like if you think it's hard to record this video, it's hard for me to do everything. <laughs> There's always someone walking around in front of me, turning the TV on, making a sandwich. So like I need to, it needs to be simple. It needs to be stuff that I can keep track of. And I feel like if I'm that way, there must be other people who feel the same way. So I try to make it simple. I try to make it the kind of thing where if you're reading and your kid says, mom, I'm bored, you'll still kind of remember what was happening after you 
find something for them to do. <laughs> right. I think that's a great, a great point. Okay. So this is a big clumped together question. Stacy Hensley, Lori Burgess, Patsy Lowe, Laura Goldstone, oh. and Bev Banfield all had questions about your writing process. So are you ready? Okay. This is going to be rapid fire. Oh, are you a plotter or a pantser? How do you come up with the ideas for each book? So kind of all process. And Alina or Lena Keller ask if you have all the twists in the story laid out in your head ahead of time, or do you write them as, or do they pop up when you're writing? Oh, and how long does it take you to write a book? All right. Well, that's four things. So I yes. think maybe I can remember them. Except okay. I've gotten them all already. Now, plot or pants. Plot. So I, <laughs> I, I do plot out my stories beforehand, but I know people who write these like really detailed outlines, like I'm going to write down what happens in every chapter. And I don't do that. So I know what the twist is going to be because that's the most important part of any thriller. And if I don't have that, how can I build up to it and leave the little Easter egg? So you gotta know what that twist is gonna, or I I have to know what the twist is gonna be when I start. But um, I also let the characters kind of take me where they wanna take me. And there are sometimes little details at the end that I haven't worked out yet. And I'm like, eh, I'll figure it out as I, as I write. And I usually do figure it out. And sometimes I come up with something really good that if I hadn't already started writing, I probably wouldn't have thought of it. Um, what was the next part? <laughs> so, yeah. So kind of, okay. So you, let's say, okay, so you did the plotter. Pansy, so you're kind of a light plotter, but you know. Light you plotter. Know. Yeah. yeah. Level and then so process wise, are you going to just sit down and write for days on end or do you have certain times? That kind of question. Yeah, because, you know, because of work and everything, I try to like write when I have like some time off. And so what I'll do is I'll think of the story in my head for like two or three months. And then when I get that block of time, when I know I have time to write, I'll just write like a crazy person until I'm done. And that can, you know, that takes less time than the thinking part. Um, so it's really just like it's in my head and I just am translating it onto the paper. So when you're translating, like how, how long on average do you think? It can I know be, you've been you know, like I have like a really, like if I really got it all set and it goes very smoothly, it could take like just a couple of weeks. But if it's not going as smoothly, I mean, a month or so. That's pretty fast, dude. That's what, yeah. I mean, that's a fast pace, just in case anybody's wondering, that's really fast. But, but also though, if you add in the thinking time, I mean, that makes it more like a longer process, but it's still really right, fast. Right, right. <laughs> The thinking is important. The thinking is important. Okay. And your characters feel so relatable. They're big dreams, petty desires, and complaints. How do your characters come to you? And would you say you're a people watcher? And also, Katie, Valerius wonders, are any of your characters inspired by actual people you know? So um, I definitely have a lot of curiosity about things. Like, this is another thing with my husband. Like, like when we're talking about something going on, I'll like want to know every detail about it, like kind of a gossip and he doesn't care. I'm like, you have no curiosity. I'm like, maybe it's because he's a man. Maybe men have less curiosity than women. Curiosity is probably a nice word for what I'm describing, but I'm, just, I'm very interested in like people's lives and what's going on with them. And I don't know if I ever like use it, but I just like, I'm interested. It's like, I find it very interesting, like what's happening in people's lives around me. Right. So, um, so when you're quizzing him about things and I would imagine your friends as well, like you're kind of absorbing just different characters. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I just like, you know, what's the story of how your parents met or like my <laughs> husband doesn't know how his parents met. I'm like, how could you not know that? Right. <laughs> Yeah, he needs to find out and then tell you so you have a story. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. every detail of how my parents met starting from the day they were born. So um, <laughs> they met when they were 12. They did? <laughs> yeah. No way. And what grade would that be? Um, like well, my mom was 12 and my dad was 14. So seventh grade and ninth grade. Okay, that part I made up. But okay. They're so no longer together, but they, oh, okay. they, but they did they, I mean, but they dated. It was a beautiful was, love story for a while. <laughs> right. And then it wasn't. That's so yeah. good for thriller writers. I like that. Yeah. That's right. But it's no, but everyone's alive. Nobody's, there's never any 
foul play. So no, that's, that's for you to handle in your book. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's all about that because it is like, you just can't help it. I think if you're an author, you're just like scanning, not only like what's happening in the news and all the big yeah. stuff, that, happens, that little stuff, everyday stuff that happens and, and it'll all of a sudden, like something will stick in your head and you're like, wow, that's strange. Or that could be a story part. Yeah. I yeah. Know. I got this morning. Um, there was a note on my car and my husband's car in like this bleeding like black ink it had been raining overnight and it said like you should not be parking here you owe fifty dollars for parking here and I was like terrified I like brought this into the house it's like this paper with the ink running everywhere and I'm like saying to my husband look what someone left on the car I thought this was going to be something where tomorrow I was going to see our tires slash and this is going to be a whole like the watcher kind of situation where like this was going to go on and on and I like texted our neighbors like did you see anyone leave this note (laughs) and like apparently this like five-year-old girl who lives next door she actually told me about it. She's like, you all have $50 because you're parking here. And it was all like a joke. And I didn't even recognize that a five-year-old had written this note on my car. I thought it was some like adult maniac. So, But see the story you'll keep with yeah, you. It so- was an adult maniac. Right, right. Yes, yes, I like that. We had a similar thing actually. Um, my when my kids parked across the street this person in our neighborhood is very particular about who parks in front of their house and so he's done any number of things but the latest was he put a big sign do not park here and so he did it in the cloak of darkness right but <laughs> he, uh, cars have cameras in them now yeah. and so you see this man like in the middle of the night sticking this sign on the camera I'm like are you kidding me right now I'm like ring here anyway so yeah he's on camera yeah people it. leave crazy things on cars somebody mm-hmm. once left a note on my car written in soap they wrote it in soap on my window like do not park here so I feel like I was justified in being terrified <laughs> that was a completely normal response yeah even though I'm yeah. very embarrassed now obviously but- yeah, I think that's yeah, kind of, um, yeah, all right. So, okay, onward. But Amber Kalibhan, uh, Amber, I can't pronounce your last name. Sorry, I'm a care student Rita, so I get it all the time. Okay, wonders who your favorite thriller authors are. Oh, besides Kara Rita. No, she didn't say that part. I love your book, Kara. Oh, thank no. you. That's nice. Thank you. But seriously, like who, who are your favorite authors or what's your favorite books to read? I, I mean, I love books so much. I recently, I've been very into a couple of authors. So my two favorites at the moment um, are uh, Jennifer Hillier wrote some, I just read um, The Butcher and I loved it so much. It was so good. And non-thriller, if I can say that, is Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm so into her. She's like yeah. my girl crush. She's wonderful. She's, she is amazing. And my my bigger favorite over the last like maybe 10 years is Tess Gerritsen. And I love her Rizzoli and Isles series. That is such a great series. So mm-hmm. these are some of my favorites. Um, great answer. I know it's so yeah. hard because as soon as somebody asks that question, you see all the books in your mind that you love. I know. <laughs> I, I could honestly spend the whole hour just talking about books I love. So I'll yeah. just stop there. That's awesome. Okay, here's another question. You're a doctor and a writer. How do you find the time to write? Oops, this is multi-part again. What does a typical day look like for you? You kind of answered some of this. Um, and then Shana DeWile wonders if any of your coworkers or patients have recognized you yet. And Jillian Gonzalez wonders how your job in the medical field influences your writing. So this is my medical field question. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this in some sort of order. Okay. That's being evolving in my head. Um, So yeah, I'm actually uh, not out as an author at work. I have not told anyone because I know the second I tell anyone, everyone will know. It's like opening that little door. So I I haven't told people. So patients don't know. My my closest friends at work don't know. I mean, my non-work friends do know, but or a lot of them know, but I just, at work, I just want to keep it separate. Um, And partially it's because some of, 
you know, some of the experiences, like my early books were very, a lot more medical based on a lot of medical things, you know, my internship, for example, and, um, you know, I work on a brain injury unit and I don't at the moment, but I was, uh, when I wrote my book brain damage and a lot of it was sort of based on patient encounters when I myself had or heard from other people. So I just wanted to keep it all separate and not have people that I work with reading it and being like, oh, is that me? Even if it isn't them, maybe they think it's them. So I just wanted to keep all of that separate. So I've I've been very, I'm very good at keeping secrets, I guess. So I haven't told anyone. Um, and it's sort of a joke that like, I just want to see someday walk into a patient's room and see them reading one of my books. And that would just be so cool. I would just like would die inside, but it hasn't happened. But so. then would you say something or no, you still wouldn't say I would anything? probably not say anything. Um, I did actually, my, my friend uh, Pamela Kelly is an author and I recently walked into a patient's room and saw somebody reading one of her books and I was really excited. And I said to the patient, this is my friend. Can we take a picture of the book so she can see? And the patient was so excited. She was like, yes. Um, so we, we took the picture. We, we like arranged her little table and we put the picture there and I took the picture and I sent it to Pam. So, and I'm seeing in the comments, yeah, Frida McFadden is not my real name. It is my pen name. Great. Oh yeah. I'm glad you're looking. There's like going so yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm bopping up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, do you, so um, the medical field did influence your writing, especially yeah. in your earlier books. Yeah, so definitely influenced. And then to answer the last, or the, I think it was the first question, but I'll answer it last. <laughs> um, you asked about the balance of how do you do, and people ask me this a lot, how do you do being a doctor and being an author? It's so hard. And um, it is really hard. And, you know, in the past, I've just said, um, it's, you know, I'm really good at multitasking. I'm so good at that. I can do this it's easy. And that was true when I was just independently publishing. But now that I've become, uh, you know, working with a publisher more, working with more publishers, um, it, it's become really hard. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And um, for that reason, I've actually recently made the decision to um, go per diem at my at the hospital where I work. Um, so I'm leaving my regular full time. Well, it's not full time, it's part time, but it's five days a week. And I just can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm very overwhelmed and stressed. I feel like I use the word overwhelmed like five times a day. That's my favorite word now. So yeah. I felt like I needed for me and to focus on something I was really passionate about, which is my writing, um, I wanted to step back on being a doctor. And I still want to do it. I'm still going to do it a couple of times a week. Uh, I'll come in, cover people's vacations and weekends. But, you know, being a doctor is so important to me. And I think it's such an important job that I don't want to give it any less than 100%. And if I can't do that because I'm doing something else, and my heart is there right now, I need to take a step back from that. So I had a very terrifying conversation with my boss where I told him that I would, you know, not be there anymore as a regular person. But not the reason. Uh, well, it's funny, actually. We Before I talked to him, I had a very long conversation with multiple people about whether to tell him the reason or not. So I was like, should I, I, I should tell him. Or I was like, should I make up some other story? Because once I tell him, I've opened the door and now everyone will know, but how can I not tell him? I don't want to lie to him. So, um, you know, I got on the phone with him to have this conversation. I told him, you know, I, I need to leave. He was like, this is not good news. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm doing something else. And he said, okay. And that was it. it. Like, it would have been awkward to tell him at that point. He just didn't want to know. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's, 
that's fine. We're not going to talk about it then. So coming back with the male personality comment. Yes, he has no curiosity. No details. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's a man. No curiosity. Yeah. And my yeah. husband overheard me saying that that he had no curiosity, and my husband shouted, "He's being professional," which is also true. Is also true. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, and a lot of people over here on the chat are saying, "Now are you going to go on book tour because you have so much extra time?" <laughs> I'm not sure she has that much extra time, guys. I think I'm she- very busy and I have two kids. So, and one of them we're studying for the SATs right now. So that, that is, is no that's a lot. That is no <laughs> so fun at all. I've got a lot to occupy my time. She does. Well, yeah, and I think um, when you're doing the business side of publishing with multiple publishers, that does take up a lot of time and coordination. It does. I predict in the future, you'll be able to go on book tour. I predict. We'll see. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, but right now, I mean, first of all, I'm I'm still actually going to be working through the end of 2023 because just, you know, out of courtesy, he needs time to replace me. And then that person has to be credentialed. So it's a whole thing. So I just wanted to leave the right way. I don't want to be a jerk and be like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I want, I wanted to, you know, give him some time. Right. And plus that leaves the door open for you too, yeah. to like pop back in, which is great. Right. Okay. New question. Joshua McDonald asks, where does the creativity come from? And Diane Roth wonders if writing the books is as much fun for you as it is for us to read them. Oh, that's I like um, As for where the creativity comes from, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's, maybe it's genetic because my children are very creative, although my parents aren't, so I don't know. <laughs> um. And uh, I I do love writing books. I've always been doing this. This is, as I said, I've been doing it since I was nine years old. I have like, I was posting this on Facebook. I have notebooks filled with stories. I would just like spend all my free time writing and reading. So it's, it is fun. It's like the most fun I'm ever having is when I'm writing a book. And the second most fun is when I'm editing a book. So that's, Really? I can't, I don't like the editing process. Do you like that? I, I do. That I don't know why. I'm so weird. No, no, I mean, some people love it. I just like, I always feel like but once I turn in the draft, I'm like, okay, it's like, finished. It's the best it can be. <laughs> and uh, then you get all the notes back and you're like, darn it, it is not the best it can be. I mean, it always makes it better, but I'm getting better. I think it's just like uh, being, I don't know. But now I'm like appreciative of the notes, but I still don't yeah. like it. I've thought so. I've been lucky. I've worked with some really great editors and they'll give me ideas and I'll be like, that's such a great idea. And like, it, it gets me all excited about the book. And I feel like, you know, when I'm writing the book, the people in the book are like my friends. And yeah. then when I finish it, I'm like leaving my friends behind. I'm going away. So like when I'm editing it, I get to visit my friends again. That sounded a little <laughs> stupid, true. but that's what it feels <laughs> like. That's true. That's true. Because they pop back in your brain and they're with yeah, you. Yeah, I get yeah. to revisit them and it's fun. This is really fun. Okay. Well, I mean, this is a good segue into this. Okay. So which one of your characters from any of your books is your absolute favorite and why? And this is a question from Teresa, Anna Morante, and Jessica Varless. No, I mean, I love so many of the characters in my book. Um, definitely like a fan favorite has been Enzo from the Housemaid series. I did not see that coming. I think, you know, if I really had to choose, though, I would say it's probably going to be um, Jane for my first, my Devil Wears Scrub series, my first books, because, you know, it's really, of all my books, it's the one most based on my life. And it's really just like about me. So um, I guess I have to pick that. Oh, that's what you said. It's like close to your heart still. Yeah, it's very close to my heart. Exactly. Yeah. And was that your first book? Yes, it was my yeah. first. Well, it was my first published book. Was, yeah. My first book was when I was like 10, but right. <laughs> first published book. Yeah. 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 And that is true, though. And they also always say that, like, us authors, um, our first books are actually more autobiographical, you right. know, than, than maybe later books are. I don't know why that is, but you probably do you know why that is. Um, You know, I they always say like, write what you know. And I I think, you know, I I don't think that's necessarily true. Like you obviously have to always stretch out of your comfort zone, but I think when you're inexperienced, it's a good idea to write what you know. And for a first book, I think sticking close to yourself 
is like a good strategy for I think yeah so. I think you're right I, I kind of did that too with my first published book and it yeah and it, it, that way your brain is kind of familiar with the setting and right kind of right the characters could be doing yeah yeah I think that's that's a good point okay so oh I love this question this is from Maria Bacopoulos maybe sorry Maria which book do you remember being the first one that scared you <laughs> I love that um, I think, you know, my, I think my first like scary book was probably, um, The Perfect Sun. I think of all my books because the others were, you know, my other thrillers were thrillers, but they were more just like, oh, you know, um, this woman stole my boyfriend and now I'm worried she's going to kill me. Th that one was like a real kind of murderer book and like, there were skeletons and like dead bodies. So that was like, I think the the first, like that sort of the leap to the next level. And whenever I write a book like that, my mom will read it and she'll always be like, this is horror. Like horror is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> like, I mean, I like horror. I love Stephen King, but she she apparently does not, not like horror. Okay. And that's like her worst criticism. Like this is horror. Yeah, so you scared her too much. Yeah, I scared her. Some yeah. of my books scared her. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's questions in here. Will there be a Housemaids three? Um, I don't know why anyone thinks that. I mean, I haven't hinted at that at all or talked about a possible plot. I'm not sure why anyone thinks that. So okay. And <laughs> how? Okay. Oh, how can we purchase a signed copy here? Well, if you ordered in advance then right. this will arrive in like six to eight days, correct? That's what yeah. we're saying. And if you haven't, you can still go and order from your local Barnes & Noble, correct? So yeah, I've been I've been going to different Barnes. I've been to three Barnes & Nobles in the last couple of weeks, signing books. They've been so nice and it's so fun. They've been telling me stories. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I also have a couple of other places that might have signed copies. So if you join my Facebook reader group, if they're signed copies, I'll let you know first where they're going to be. There you go. Yeah, first okay. dibs. Another question. Christian Simpson asks, what are you introducing to readers and the coworker that you haven't shown us before in any of your stories? And what do you hope readers come away with after having read it? Well, what I love about the coworker most is that it's about bullying, which I don't think I've ever written about before. And I, you know, I it's not something I want to talk about a lot, but I was bullied when I was a kid. Like there were different years of my life when I went through that. And it's really awful. Like I, I know a lot of people have been through that, especially as children. It's so common. Um and it's very frustrating because, you know, you, you almost feel like there's something you could do to stop it, but in actuality, it's very hard to stop. So I kind of wanted to just capture that feeling of frustration and how hard that is and, and give it the ending I would want it to have. So that, that's what I always say about my books. I love to give stories the ending they deserve to have, right? Because in real life, you have no control over that. The bad guy always, not always, but the bad guy can often win. And there's nothing um, you can do. Like someone can screw you over. It's just like, oh, well, what can I do? But yeah. in book, you can change that. <laughs> exactly. It's your own world and exactly. you can fix things, which is really nice. Yeah. I was just um, in a, another interview and somebody said that in America, how many, uh, what percentage do you think homicides have been, are solved? Oh, no. Talking about bad guys getting away with it. <laughs> Seriously. Like I would think like with DNA and all that testing yeah. stuff, like 90%. And she was saying it's like 30 to 40%. Oh, so well, bad guys are still getting away with stuff. That's yeah. That is surprising because whenever I watch like TV shows, like I'm, you know, watching um, yellow jackets now and anyone's trying to get away with a murder, they seem to be so bad at it. It's and I'm like, like, I would definitely be bad at it. Like, I'm not yeah. even going to try to kill anyone because I, I would just be really bad at it. I already know that. I think, yeah, yeah, it's it's true that most murderers are not very smart about it, you know, right. it's kinds of passion. And it's usually someone you know, right? right. 
Right. So then the like circle of who could be yeah. is pretty tight, but apparently some people still get away with stuff. So that's what we get. Okay. And I think you've answered this, but Don Angels asks, when did you realize you wanted to be an author? I think you said it 10. Yeah. Well, up until, you know, like very recently, I wouldn't have even said I'm an author. Like I, <laughs> you know, people, it was, what was, where was I recently? Uh, I was meeting the, um, the mother of a friend of my daughter. And she said to me, Oh, I hear you're an author. And I'm like, I'm a doctor. <laughs> and I feel like whenever I meet anyone that my kids are in contact with, we have that conversation. Like, no, a doctor. And they're like, oh, so you write as a hobby. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? So um, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't want to get into it. But um, I guess now if I'm, if I'm, cutting back on my job and doing this mostly full time, maybe I need to actually say I'm an author. So let's just say um, I knew I wanted to be an author a few weeks ago and I told my boss that I was leaving and I will be an author uh, yeah. in January, 2024. <laughs> there you go. Stepping into the author hat. I like That's it. That's right. Oh, and by the way, somebody corrected me, chat GT. PT said 60 to 70% of homicides are so there's only like okay. 40 to 30 so that's a little better getting away with it yeah so thank you for <laughs> that whoever was over there um yes and maybe my murder will be solved then yes yeah. it's not good to bury a body beneath your office floor probably not nope nope and okay let's see oh there's so many nice comments you should be reading some of these they're really nice um okay so all right are you gonna oh you're, yeah, somebody wants to know, are you going to tell your coworkers now that you're out from undercover? Not until January, probably. It's such, yeah, it's such a good question. And it's another one I've gone back and forth about because there, there are a couple, of, you know, I don't want the general population to necessarily know, but there are a couple of people I work with who I'm really, really close with. And I feel actually kind of bad that I haven't told them. And I think to myself, I, I wish I could, like, I want to. Um, and they know I, I'm doing something else on the side because I'm just like, I have a meeting I have to get to. Or I was so busy last night, but, um, you know, I've kind of been vague about it. So I haven't decided yet. Um, if I if I do tell them, I will surely catalog the entire thing and talk about it on Facebook because I love doing that. Hopefully yeah. they won't hate me for not telling them. <laughs> I know. So yeah. So how long has it been that you've been working with them and been doing um, at that point it'll be about five and a half years. <laughs> so yeah, they yeah, I, I think they'll just be like, what? Like they'll just be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. They're not gonna be mad at you. They're just gonna be surprised. And they'll be surprised. And <laughs> well, you know, I, I when I tell people I'm an author, usually the response is a little bit like underwhelming. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what to say. And right. I think that's part of why I don't tell more people because I just, I don't know. I don't, it, it feels like an awkward cover. I feel like Don and that, I feel like a lot of my conversations are awkward. That's why I, I relate to Don so much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Don's a great character in the coworker. Okay, um, someone's asking, do you enjoy kind of having a double life? <laughs> I do. I feel very like much undercover, like when I'm doing book stuff on my phone and like nobody knows what I'm doing. And it, it's kind of fun, like to have a little <laughs> secret. And it's sneaky. Yeah, I know. Well, okay, but I figure I think eventually it's going to come out. But you, I don't know. Like, I mean, yet. somebody from your work could be watching this today. They and could. Then, Probably um, not. Oh yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I, it's I, a big world. I think that's one thing I've le learned over time. Like it's it's a giant world, and like a lot of times, you know, I'll when I do tell someone, like, oh, I'm I'm Rita McFadden. Um. <laughs> Then they first they laugh when they hear the pen name. Then they say, "Oh, I don't know who that is." So, like nobody's heard of me, and much less like you know, like what I, I always say, like I could work. So I love Tess Garrett's, and I've loved her forever. She could be my coworker. I could be working with her right now. There's at least two people who could possibly be her. I could imagine, and and I would never know because I only vaguely know what she looks like. 
And I don't know what she really sounds like. So I could definitely be working with her and I would never know. And she's like my favorite. So like, well, yeah, I mean, the author career is one that you can be kind of behind. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We're not like race after you for autographs. It's like, you know, it's pretty low key. Right. We're not like, you know, Chris Hemsworth where like people say right. you and they're like, <gasps> oh my gosh yeah although I did do that a little bit like when I see an author for the first time that I've read I kind of get that in my head but then I yeah yeah but yeah but But I wouldn't recognize them is my point right no I wouldn't unless unless, oh that's yeah right yes exactly yeah so okay um you know this is the exciting moment when I get to ask you one of the last questions but Kim Keldorf asks What's next after the coworker? And Natalie Robinson wonders what you can tell us about your next book. Well, I am so glad you asked that question because I happen to have right here a copy of my next book, which is called The Teacher. Everyone. <laughs> and there was some, there was, it was floating around the internet a little bit this morning. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to talk, of, I'm not going to talk about it right now. But I love this book. Um, I'm so excited to, sh- to show it to you. And Barnes & Noble is doing a special edition. And that's not to say it won't be available everywhere else. But the Barnes & Noble edition is going to have all this other cool stuff in it that I wrote specifically for the Barnes & Noble edition. So that's definitely going to be one you want to get. So, And it will be out in February of 2024. And... I don't know when it will. I think it's already live on Barnes and Noble and Amazon. Um, and there will be an audio book and it will be on Kindle Unlimited. So all your questions. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very but good. <laughs> the Barnes and Noble edition will be the only one with all the special content. So, and this is it. Right. Okay. There you go. Lots of happiness and joy exploding in the chat and everyone's very excited about it. So um, yeah. And and the other question I didn't ask, and maybe this is a time that you uh, can do this. Are you ever going to record any of the audio books? Oh my gosh. No, because, (laughs) you know, it was funny. Like there was um, when they were sending us the instructions for this, uh, this little chat here, it said, you know, you could, you could read from your book for a little bit. So I was like, hmm, could I? So I recorded myself for like two minutes reading and I listened back. I was like, no, we're not going to be doing that. No, you notice I didn't even ask you to do that. Let's, I hate that. Like, let's leave it to the professionals. Exactly. They, they have, I hire someone to do that because they're yeah. good at it. I think so. that's brilliant. I think that's brilliant. Okay, you guys, I think we're reaching the end of our show today. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank, thank you, you Rika, thank you for being here. And you guys, they've dropped the link to where you can pre-order the teacher and you can get the coworker now. And if you've already ordered the coworker, it will be on your doorstep between six to eight business days, they said. And or you can go to your local Barnes and Noble and some of them have signed copies. So Anyway, congratulations on Pub Day and all your success, Frida. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's here, who's bought coffees. And thank you to Barnes & Noble for hosting this event. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you, Kyra, for for being an amazing interviewer. Thank you. And I love your new book, Beneath the Surface. Thank you. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.